That is live. He didn't pick this up. That's shame on him. Shame on him, because this is not what we do. The home inspector should have cut these holes. This was a quick fix. This obviously leaked many times. There's a lot of water at this side of the house, because that house is draining this way. Our job has changed. Right now, it's about water. When Kim and Daniel decided to buy this house, they did the right thing. They brought in a home inspector. They read the report. They understood it. They asked questions. They did the work. Now they're at the end of the rope, things they don't understand. I'm going to show you what the home inspector saw and what he didn't see, and I'm going to make it right. When we first walked in the house, I really liked the house. And the floor was so beautiful, nice and clean, nice and fresh. Two big hill room. And uh, the basement is newly renovated. And the washroom up here is newly renovated too. And when I come in, it's just like, this is a dream house. <laughs> I always wish our family had a nice neighborhood, nice house to live in. And everything is really for the kids. As we came from downtown condominium, it was very stuffy, very concrete. Here, you had open space so that they can run around and play outside safely and also play inside safely. We hired an inspector to make sure wasn't, you know, everything's okay before we purchased the house. The home inspector said you need a new furnace, a new hot water heater, even work on the roof. He said there was grading issues. But those are all the problems the homeowners felt they could take care of themselves. And so they bought the house. Yeah. Daniel, I'm uh, Mike. Nice, nice to you. meet you. I hear you have some problems. Lots of problems. Lots of problems. Well, that's why I'm here. Let's take a look. Thank you. My older daughter, her closet, for some reason on the corner, started having mold. And there was a big puddle on the newly renovated hardwood floor that we put in. The wall here was soft, and I have a shell here. I put clothes here, all the clothes were damp. Okay. And it was black mold from upstairs all the way to down here. First sign I'm going to look for is it coming from the roof, because we always want to start from the top. I think too many people come and look at things and go, oh, there's an issue here, and they're going to look down while water travels down. I'll take a look at your kitchen. Okay, your kitchen has been slightly updated, hasn't it? Somebody has tiled after the kitchen was installed. That's not usually the way I like to see it. I can see the tiles run right up to the bottom of the uh, dishwasher and not directly underneath it, and that's due to the clearance, really, from the countertop. That tells me the floor was tiled after the cabinets were installed. I always have a question. <clears throat> The inspector never told us this. What is this? I'm afraid my child come here and play with it. Well, you have something to be afraid about. If those wires are live, that can be dangerous. Something tells me you had a garburator in here before. Okay. So what I want to see is if we have live lines. And we do. He didn't pick this up. That's shame on him. Shame on him, because this is not what we do. Oh, you've been doing some work. I'm going to look at all the plumbing, because what I see so far, the old plumbing looks correct. I think we're just below the minimum height that is required for the drainage for the washing machine. It should be up about this high. So I'll look into that. It'd be really nice if they secured the stuff, because that just gets to me. Like, do you really use the sink? Oh, I wonder what you hear noise upstairs. Oh, that's yeah. it? Yeah. Well, if I can move pipes and they make noise, the water exactly. pressure moves pipes. That's the bedroom. We go to doom, 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 and the girl gets what a right headache. Yeah, well, she gets a headache. <laughs> yeah. What is she hearing? I did not read about this in the report. Did you put in this in? Yeah, did this because the water heater, old water heater, wasn't producing enough hot Right, water. I read that in the report. That's yeah. why I had a feeling you did this. Yeah, we did this. And the pressure valve. Pressure release valve. Keeps on kicking off. Now, it's not kicking off, because if it kicked off, it would flood the basement. OK, what it's doing is it's leaking through the pressure valve. Have you called them back? We called them back? He said, we have water pressure problem. Said, oh, horse crap. Yeah, he said, go get a plumber. They drilled the floor all the way around in this corner. There was a big table, which the seller had told us it was a fixed shelving. After we bought the house, 
We moved it, we noticed that there were holes drilled into the floor. And we started noticing that there were rusty nails and it looked like moisture had, had entered the house. The inspector said there's evidence but uh, he said everything is dry at this time and that everything looks good. What's this hole for? Two weeks ago, we had really torrential rains and the water started flowing down uh, to the lowest point. There. From where? From this, from this corner. And you can see that it was coming in from the corner. Yeah. So I opened up here and I felt water coming in. There was no floor tiles. This was like this. When you moved the table, you saw the holes. Yes, yes that's right. This was a quick fix to solve water coming in. This obviously leaked many times, and the homeowner had this done, or they did it themselves. So any water that has actually come in the house goes into the holes and drains down. The table covered those holes, so I can understand why the inspector could not see them. However, he should have seen these holes. Somebody has chiseled a trench line coming across. So any water that has actually come in the house goes directly into the small trench, into the holes, and drains down. There was nothing in the report about this, by the way. Let's go upstairs. You had a foundation company come in and seal this wall, yes? Yes. yes. That's not good enough. You need a retaining wall to stop the water from his property coming against your foundation. OK. What happens? Water runs from his property right down this hill, right to your foundation. It's nonstop. That's why you have water coming in the basement, and it's probably why they drilled the holes in the floor. You need a retaining wall, I'll tell you right now. OK. That's a big job. Just the retaining wall is a big oh. job. Never mind anything else I've seen in your house. Just the retaining wall in itself is a big job. Oh, no. Let's go outside. OK. I need some fresh air. So we can see the water runs down to the side of the house, continues to come in this way. This property runs in this way and just controls all the water to come into the corner at this house, right where we don't want it. That's right at the windows. It's going to penetrate every single time. The inspector noted the grading issues, but he missed the holes in the basement floor. And to me, these are definite signs of ongoing issues. It's going to continue coming down here, right against the corner of this house, right against the window, which, by the way, the, the grade is too high against the brick here. Never should they have brought the earth to this point here, because what we have is mortar in between the stones. The water's just going to come in underneath it. No wonder you got water in the corner here. You see underneath this? We call this undermining. They did it again. They brought the earth up to the brick here. Totally not acceptable. This is sloppy. Yeah. Don't you think this is sloppy? This is ugly. Yeah. They yeah. could have done it neatly across the top, whatever. I feel horrible. So I learned so many things happening in this house. Let's all breathe together, OK? Can we breathe? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go through your whole house, and I'm going to show you what I found, OK? Yeah. Beyond what I know already. Our job has changed. Now it's about water. You think you're going to solve the problem, but just fixing the foundation, think again. I start. <laughs>He didn't pick this up, but that is live. This was a quick fix. This obviously leaked many times. Man, you got great issues here. Not great, great. But you need a retaining wall to skirt the water from going against the foundation. I'm going to start on the outside of the house today. They were talking about surface mold that was running down the wall here and in the corner, and even on this side here. And as we step back and look at this, why do we have mold in the closet? There's the vent stack right there. The roof line runs this way. If there's any entrance of water getting in that vent stack, it's going to run down into the closet. The further the water goes, deeper your hand goes into your pocket to solve the problem. There's the chimney. There are no caps on top of the exhaust, none. So that's allowing water to come right down inside the chimney. I did not read about this in the report. The cap itself is deteriorating, which is allowing water in. These shingles are in pretty rough shape. Just look at the cupping, eh? Just look at how they come down and see how this cupped in here. Each, each layer is cupped in. We see the cracking here. We see the cracking going across. This is not good. Holes, holes, 
falling apart at the bottom here. From what I'm seeing just on this side of the house, that there's not a lot more water in the house. Well, the roof's got to be replaced. We see water coming across the driveway. Why? The biggest culprit at this point is the one downspout right here. This downspout here, they've taken it out of the drain in the ground. Well, I can see it's been taken out. They didn't cap it and ran it here. So what's going to happen? Water is just going to pour out of here simply because it's the only one on this side of the house. All the water from the roof is going to come here. It's going to work its way right back out front, right to the gas meter. And that was not in the report. It shows there's been a lot of moisture issues here, because if all that water is also coming this way, because we have a down run this way as well, it's being absorbed into the foundation of the garage and up into the brick, and that's why we have the deterioration on the brick. Like, look at the moisture on the brick in here. And that's just picking it up through the ground and wicking it up. And why? The grade is too high here. As water collects on two peaks of the roof, it just shoots right off, and I'll bet you it just drops right here. Look at this wet area right here. You can't just dig down and fix the foundation at the back and at the front. We can clearly see the driveway and everything runs into the front of the house. We can clearly see that everything runs into the back of the house. So if you think you're going to solve the problem by just fixing the foundation, think again, because that water is going to come in, because it's running to the house. We're going to have to put in a retainer wall starting here, coming across at this point stopping approximately here and working our way down to probably the first fence post and back in again. So if we put in a retaining wall, we'll hold the earth up, and then we create control of water movement. And that's using weeping tiles. So whether or not it's on the inside or on the outside or both, I'll determine that as we go. As long as it bleeds out in the front yard, I'm fine with that. Moisture travels from wet to dry. Where's the dry? In the basement. Start. <laughs> Start right here. So this is the wall in the back where the big window is. This is the area where we see the back of the house. This is the area here where it's the number one area for water to come in. And it shows. I can see the signs of the water. Look at the tiles. See these yellow stains here? They have been saturated with water. See where the trim actually meets? That's water points. So, you know, evidence is water was in this basement before. I'm definitely going to be opening up or have Damon open up this corner because we want to see what damage has been done, whether or not we have an issue of mold or not. Back upstairs. That's not working. Well, this is one of the main reasons I came in here, because there was a cold closet on the outside wall, and there was, there was mold. But the mold was simply surface mold. And I think the leak is coming from the attic, which is exactly where I'm going now. I'm seeing all kinds of areas where water has penetrated the roof. It's leaked all the way around the chimney. Very visible. It's right there. Looking around all the rafters, we see some uh, water point issues. So uh, that tells the tale that water's been coming in, and we got to stop that. Honestly, I've seen enough, and I can get Damon. He can take it from here. All right, let me show you what I thought the problem was. All right. So we're not going to get this closet. Yeah. OK, we're just going to sand this down. We're going to get a mold resistant, like a bathroom paint. Yeah. So we're going to. Sand it down, prime it, we're no just going to fix it. You don't even have to worry about this, because it's not the issue. Let me show you the real issue. OK. OK? It's about water. OK. Behind this wall, yes. right here. If I could see behind this wall right now, yeah. what, what I see is a window. window. Okay. It's a big window. Are you gonna, serious? It's going to be a five-foot window. Right there? Right there. At this point right now, I want this opened up. Let's open up that corner there. Yeah. Just open up the corner. Let's confirm there's no mold. We want to see where the water's coming from. I want to know if the weeping towel on the outside of the house is good enough. OK. In the report, the home inspector said they needed to replace the roof. He was right. We're replacing the roof. The clay flues that come out do not have any caps. Let's pick up three of them. This is the downspout for the front of the house and the side of the house. Yeah. So, so much water's coming out that it's leached across. And over the years, we see how it's deteriorated the brick. Yeah. So, follow the water. 
It all comes this way. Not to mention every yard is higher than this one. Uh, yeah, this one here also drives this yeah. way. So the foundation guys that came in to address this because the homeowners called them in, dug up this area, dug up that area, and actually did a waterproofing to the door and to here. <laughs> they did not put in a window well yeah. with a vertical weeper, and they are too high on the grade. I'd say they're at the window height. They did not recommend a retaining wall, which yeah. absolutely is a necessity here. Yep. It's a necessity. No window well, no window well, undermining by the air conditioning. We need to address where the water's coming from, reroute the water, and fix the foundation areas. The good thing is that, uh, Really, the garage is in good shape. <laughs> That's great. Can they move in there for a little bit? <laughs> I want this whole sheet off right here. This is a major shock hazard. This house, it's just disaster. And these shingles are in pretty rough shape. Each layer is cut in. Holes, holes. Wow, the roof's got to be replaced. Well, we have a big day going on here today. We have the uh, roofers tearing off the roof. They started about half an hour ago. They're almost half done. The biggest issue with this roof is the venting. They've had turbine style vents, uh, power vents, regular roof vents. They're semi-closed off the vents with just aluminum panels from underneath, which really didn't do much. They've got a bathroom exhaust vent coming into this, which is a completely improper way of doing it. When they've got an opening here and an opening there, this vent's really just pulling air from there. It's not pulling air from down at the eave where we need the full circulation. We're gonna fill in all of these existing openings and actually cut a ridge vent in and, and utilize a ridge vent system. Uh, ridge venting is more optimal uh, because it's right at the high point of the roof, right at the peak of the roof where that heat is going to, um, and it cleans up the roof line. We're going to finish cleaning off all the, uh, the existing shingles. We're going to replace uh, bad boards that have splits or knots. Uh, there's a couple of botched repairs on this roof. Uh, we'll check out the uh, perimeter areas, make sure that the proper soft venting is there. And then uh, all our underlayment system will go in, our, our roofing papers, our ice and water shield, uh, drip edge, and then it's the application of the shingles. Martin. Yes, sir. This is where the issue starts. I'll probably end up cutting some of those lines, okay. obviously getting rid of all that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, if there's any problem with the faucet uh, and, and the sink and, or, or even the drain, then, you know, it's all going to be taken care yeah. of. Yeah, and there's just small issues. And I'm sure if you start looking around, you're going to start seeing stuff. I would really like you to check every drain in the house. Okay. Uh, scope everything if you can. Mm -hmm. I notice a lot of trees on this property. You know yes. what that means. Yes, trees. I want to check out the main yeah. going to the city. A yeah. scope and you get, go. Get the ball rolling. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Okay. This is tree roots. Quite extensive in this case. It's blocking majority of the pipe. You can see it's uh, you got maybe 5% of opening. So once the roots penetrate the pipe and they grow inside, that will, that will be the beginning of a problem, uh, which will then form a blockage, and that will lead to a flooding. We ran an electric snake. Uh, this is the evidence that we pulled out. Uh, but uh, things seem to be pretty good right now. I want to expose this wall, OK? What I'm thinking is bring it over two feet or to the nearest stud. They did waterproof this foundation, but I want to see maybe if they missed a spot. I want to see if it's actually coming through there. And oh, look at that. Above grade, we got a form bolt hole right here. Like this brick is actually damp. The whole thing. Even though they did waterproof outside, there still is water coming in somewhere between the front of the house, between the gas meter and the garage. Which is why this wall is still wet. I want this off. I want this whole sheet off right here, both okay. these. And I want you to go back to at least one more stud. I want to keep working back. Just a bit more towards you. What I want to do is expose the window that's here. I've heard of a lot of different nice. insulation types. I know some places are using recycled denim jeans, but I've never, never seen towels. Mike had found uh, this wire here during his uh, home inspection. We've turned the power off right now, so it is safe. 
basically switches off. You're putting things in and out of the, underneath the sink. You're not paying attention. You've just turned the switch on. You've livened this up. The sink doesn't even have to be full of water. All this has to be doing is touching the sink like so. You walk by, you hit that sink, you're lit up. This is a major uh, shock hazard. We're gonna remove it completely. So, what do you see right away? Well, the grating uh, couldn't be much worse. Really. No kidding. Or the window in that area under the sliding door, mm -hmm. you should definitely install a window well there so we can do an exploratory dig there. Okay. Put a window well in, put a drain in, and you know when we open that up, we'll be able to see what type of waterproofing products that right. they've used. So this is where everything slopes in. This is where we're getting water in the basement is right in this corner. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that it might have something to do where the line ties into the foundation. Ideally, you should have exposed foundation and they've gone right up on this stonework. So maybe we'll do an exploratory dig right here. Yeah. We'll check where the lines are, see if there's anything that hasn't been sealed that's going into the house. Okay. Thanks, bud. Okay, David, no All problem. Right, Before uh, BFR can do their test dig, I have Ryan here to solve the grading issues that the inspector did note in his report. Kim and Daniel thought they'd solve their water issues just by waterproofing the foundation. Well, it's gonna take a combination of waterproofing and grading to solve the water issues. How you doing, guys? So you ready for concrete for nine tomorrow? First thing tomorrow, we'll get started. That's yep. a good thing, great. We pour, it's a zero slump concrete, we pour it and we set yeah. our blocks right into it. That's so brilliant. So you're using it as basically a footing. Yeah, it's just a floating That's footing. Great. But also reduces the rotation yeah. that you can sometimes get on uh, on segmental retaining walls. Yep. And you took the patio stones, yep. which is a bonus. We usually have to take care of that, which well, is no, a pain we took into a concrete recycler, so yep. at least that's taken care of and reused. So that's great. By the end of tomorrow, we'll have uh, lots of fresh new concrete okay. in here and we can get going. And I'll have fresh, uh, fresh, fresh arms green. for you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Smile, relax, you have a nice house, there's just some problems, that's all. I've been really frustrated walking through your house. Oh, no. And it's not you, I'm frustrated with what I'm seeing. I need uh, flue caps. They're gonna be about uh, seven and a half by 11 and a half, right? What's up, Damien? Mike Holmes. How you doing, man? Oh, another day, another dollar. Yeah. What's up? Well, better contracting, ripping the roof off. They say they'll have this done in a day. Uh, also, the chimney. We had Marco come in from DeSano. He's recommending stucco on it. I don't mind him stuccoing the brick itself, yep. as long as everything is watertight right down to the roof line. Yeah. All right, let's go Let with the back. Show you this, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so Ryan started. Oh, cow. So we're actually gonna start the retaining wall a little further back than we initially thought. We're gonna come the second post in, enough for the door to clear, Mike. All right. And it's mostly for the grading issue on the other side, which I totally agreed with. Something tells me he's gonna have to have a downspout here or in the corner, and we need to pick that up and control it. Talk to Ryan to see whether or not uh, we can incorporate that um, downspout to run in this system, sure. if we can. Okay. Know, like okay, I'll talk to him about it. Put the mines together and see what we can do with it. Yep. Okie dokie. Uh, let's start with this wall here. We're gonna try and give you a window back, because yep. we want a window here. We want, yeah. we want yeah. there's no daylight in this yeah. room, right? So we want that daylight. Now the corner over here, okay, we, we can see the path. Really, water always shows the path of where it's coming in. Yeah. It spreads out further and further and further, which means there's a lot of water coming in, which is now being absorbed by the block and coming down at the bottom. Whoever did the studded wall did it correct. They have a seal on the bottom. They have the tar paper on the wall because the wood is very close to the concrete, so they must put up a tar paper. But you can see the buildup of surface mold on the tar paper. The exhaust and intake for the new furnace these guys get a spanking, as far as I'm concerned. What they've done is directed okay. right out the wall here, yeah. and what do we have above? A door. A door. Yeah. Door. Not allowed. Oh. The guys that installed this yes. are vented right out here. What do we have above? It's a door. Yeah. Not allowed. It was in my home. I will never know, ever know, there's so many problems in this house. Why don't you put your coats on, and I'm going to take you outside. I pulled your roof not to make it look good, because I had no choice. We had holes galore, shingles missing, cracks in the roof. Uh, it was deteriorating, especially on the other side. 
So I have to, I have to spank you too, okay? okay? You know why I have to spank you? Yes. Why? In your report, it said to replace your roof within the first year. Did you read that? We're gonna lose all the roof vents and we're gonna do a ridge vent across the top of your roof. That chimney has been leaking for a long time. We're gonna do a foam and stucco around the brick. Okay, so it's gonna make it watertight. It's gonna make it look rather beautiful, as a matter of fact. Let's go to the back of the house, ready? Okay. We're gonna go this way. Okay. <laughs> this is just the beginning. A new retaining wall is gonna come right from that wall, right across here, right across this point to about the second post. That's right, second post in. Okay, with that retaining wall, we will have a weeping tile, which is a drainage tile. So any water that comes in this way will be picked up by the weeping tile and driven down to the front of the house. Now we know exactly what's wrong with this house. So there's no more surprise. Who built the fence? Uh, I have a contractor come in and build the fence. He built a good fence. Mm -hmm. Oh, so if I yeah. something <laughs> right. <laughs> We need tools and material to finish the job, so uh, hence Carl's delivery. Nice. Yeah, so Ryan started. Water is just going to pour out of here simply because it's the only one on this side of the house. There's so many problems in this house. Utilizing a, what they call an architectural shingle. It's two pieces incorporated as one in comparison to what we pulled off the roof, which is a three tab shingle, uh, which has slots in the shingle, which is more uh, vulnerable to wind driven rains, ice damming, uh, and such. Just a better design and a nicer look. doing here is cutting out or uh, opening at the ridge for the ridge vent that's being installed. It's best to have the ridge vent right at the peak of the roof because that's where your, your, your warm air, your heat loss is going to go to. The ridge vent itself will actually help draw the air out. It's going to prevent moisture in the attic, keep the roof a cool zone in the winter months, uh, prevent ice dams. They needed a new roof. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they got. Only enough water to activate the concrete, and that's it. The nice benefit of this is if we were to pour a concrete slab, we'd have to form this entire thing. Instead, this product is so dry, we can just form it just using rakes and shovels. It looks like gravel, works like gravel, but you know, it is concrete in the end. So essentially what we're doing is we're pouring a grade beam. So it's a beam of concrete. It'll be allowed to float up and down. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set our blocks right into this. The concrete will actually grab the, onto the bottom of the block. It's gonna resist any kind of rotation that the wall might be experienced to from pressure behind it. Also, the whole if anything were to shift, the entire wall would have to move together. There's no chance any segment of the wall could move independently. up putting in some uh, weeping pipe. So this is essentially a, a perforated pipe that has a sleeve on it. This is gonna absorb any water behind the wall. So anything coming over from the neighbor's property, 
Uh, it's gonna absorb that and also it's gonna make it so this whole area drains before the winter. Nothing's gonna build up there because it's that freeze and thaw from that moisture expanding the soil. That's what causes walls to heave. So as long as we do that, we take it all the way out into the lawn. So this actually, if anything, is gonna help water the grass on the front lawn. Kill two birds with one stone. They are getting a little bit of water in the basement, so we're gonna do an exploratory dig here, check the weeping tile system, inspect the waterproofing. What they've done here to waterproof is just apply a foundation coating and drainage board, which is the absolute building code minimum. The mistake that they've made here is they've stopped their waterproofing about an inch short from the garage wall. And what they should have done is they should have returned this at least two feet along this area to get a good seam where the two walls are meeting. Not only did they do the absolute minimum, but their waterproofing was too far below grade. So any uh, snow melting right up against the house in this area, it was gonna go right behind their membrane and they were getting water in this front corner. We're actually gonna install a membrane over this area we've exposed, which is an aqua block membrane. After this coat of mesh, we'll apply a second coat over top. That will become a seamless membrane that never fully cures. As we go through the freeze and thaw cycle, the foundation will be a little bit flexible. So this product, it won't go brittle and it'll allow for that flexibility as we go through those cycles. The final step is we put the drainage board membrane on the outside. The actual waterproofing never sees any water. But again, in the winter time, when there's two feet of snow piled up against the house and we get a flash thaw, that water's gonna melt and it's gonna get behind this membrane. So when that happens, that's why this system is applied right to the foundation airtight. There's no room for water to get behind it. We have the plumbers here, Martin and Adam. We are gonna move the hot water tank. We're gonna move it to the outside wall. That's happening today. I'm gonna clean up the plumbing here. So the plumbing's all gonna come down nice. I'm getting them a new laundry sink because the old one was coming off the wall, it's cracked, whatever, I'm just giving them a new one. I have to insulate vapor barrier drywall and put a piece of plywood there because how do I do it once it's already on? So I have to take certain steps to prepare for what they're about to do here. When he brings his new lines over, I'm already set up for him, he can continue his job. We're trying to stay a step ahead of them at all times. Down, eh? All right. Walk out to the left. The problem with this house is long runs, eh? Mm -hmm. And everywhere they've had a pipe has been water problems. <laughs> when you got runs of 75 feet, you don't want it going 75 feet and have to go around two corners to get to the pipe. It's okay in a little light trinkle, but in a heavy downpour, the water is just not going to make it there. What we've done here is install the galvanized steel window well and a weeping tile drain. What this will do is it won't allow any water or snow to build up in the area where the windows are because this weeping tile is going right down to the weeping tile system that's around the footing. So if this thing fills up with snow in the winter time, the water's gonna drain right to the bottom where we want it instead of actually causing a problem near the window areas. happy about. Mike was absolutely right where the water was coming in this corner. It was a good thing we dug this up. As soon as Colin took up the patio stones, dug down what was not even a foot, found a crack above where they had already finished the waterproofing on the outside. I've now eliminated the water problem here. We've had a lot of rain for the last three days. Nothing is coming in here. I can now close this up. Sherry, you can close this up for me. Adam, let's take that window out now and let's finish this up. Yeah, go. Hey guys, 
How you doing? Good. So, you guys getting it done? You putting on some insulation? Yeah. Uh, we're doing a lot of this lately. It's an alternative to doing some tuck pointing because, right. you know, you can correct what's what's wrong today, but then tomorrow there's always something wrong. So this is a good alternative. So when I'm Finish done with up. this, it's it's going to be uh, maintenance free. So are you able to actually do your first coat on this today? No, I've got to let this secure. I've got to let it. Really cure yeah, for I a have day. to sand it first, right? right? So before I can plaster, I've got to sand the insulation. Yep. But I want the insulation adhered properly, so, right. that, so that I'm able to sand. Sure. That's going to look great. And you have a color picked out. We're going to play off the the browns on the house, the okay. roof, the stone, the the eaves troughs, and the the cap. We're going to do a little bit lighter. Okay. A little bit of contrast. Just give it a pop. Yeah, a little bit of a pop. <laughs> okay. Make it exciting. Vincenzo. Thank you, David. See you, buddy. Thank you. We're just finishing up all the grading we're doing here. We're making it so whenever possible, water's running underground through drainage pipes out to the front lawn. When we need to, we are making the water flow across the surface of all the stones. We're having it flow diagonally away from the house, both on this level up here, as well as this small level, which is gonna be below the air conditioner. Well, these guys are doing a great job here. Excellent. Everything's just graded perfectly off the house and towards the, the yard. Wow. Well, look at that. Do you remember the window? Like? Look at that. Yeah. That's just the way to do this. It's so beautiful. <laughs> way, <laughs> way. In your report, it said to replace your roof within the first year. Did you read that? You think you're going to solve the problem, but just fixing the foundation? Think again, because that water's going to come in, because it's running to the house. You need a retaining wall to stop the water from his property coming against your foundation. Okay. It's a big window. You serious? Right there. Right there. I see no water here. I see no water down here. Uh, we're doing some cleanup here. Adam's doing a good job just finishing up. It's nice to see that window in place. It just sort of opens up the whole room here. Well, Adam did a great job. So did Sherry. Couldn't be happier. And Craig, just finishing up painting. How you doing, bud? Very good. Last wall. Good, man. It's looking really good in here. I think it's time to call Mike. It's a rainy day. It sure is. Hey, Mike. Mr. Bennett. How you doing? Good. So now that we have the rain, we're testing it out. Yeah. So when I had Collins guys dig this out, the waterproofing was way below grade. And above the waterproofing was a gap, about a three inch gap. And uh, <laughs> the water was probably just driving right in there. So what they did is you can see they brought it right up, right up to where we now have finished grade. Driving in. I saw the roof. Yeah, do you like? Oh. Does that look good? That is perfect. I love the chimney too. Let me tell yeah. you, like that's the way it should be done. What a professional. It looks finish. great, eh? We have the ridge fence. Yep. Everything. Nope. Um, designer shingles. Hot look at days. You think this is a sealed house now? It looks really good. And Rob did put smart screen around the whole house. I love that guy. Uh, yep. He did a great job. Oh, look at this. That's what I want to see. Ryan did an excellent job. He graded everything. As you can see, look at that. Everything's just graded perfectly off the house and towards the, the yard. And he's moved the downspouts. Beautiful. He didn't yep. do all new, did he? He did all new. Gotta love these people. Absolutely. Way to go, pal. Good Want to go that. inside? Yeah, for sure. Great job. Thank you. If they don't like this, I'll have to buy the house. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that look good? Boy, did ever clean up that wall. Look at that. Look do you remember at the what window? Like? Look at that. That yeah. is just the way to do this. Yeah. New gas, new water, yeah. exhaust out. Everything's right. I like it. I like it. Right. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. Hi, Cam. Hi. How are you? Daniel. Good to see you. I can go under here. There you go. <laughs> well, you know what? I'd like to start first in the basement, and then we'll work our way back out to the backyard and around the house, OK? OK. Come on in. After you, please. I'm very happy with what has been done down here. Uh, you remember, this was all pulled down the last time we looked at this. Yes, that's right. 
We could see on the outside of the house that uh, where it was coming from, Damon brought in the Bowen brothers. And what'd you find in the corner? Well, we found the gap above the waterproofing that we repaired, and we actually brought the waterproofing up and over the existing waterproofing and lapped it over. So if there's any more water hitting that spot, it'll just drain right down to your weeping tile. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy to see that you now have a window in here. Love oh, it's it. fantastic. It's just love it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's Thank beautiful. You very much. It's so bright here and clean, and everything looks so organized. You know, not messy. So all the new plumbing, even even you got a new lint trap, a new sink. So that was kind of a bonus. Beautiful. Yes. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> you don't mind that, right? No, not at all. Well, you, really you do the laundry, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah. <all> <laughs> This is the wow. part I really like. <laughs> Ryan has done such a fabulous job with this. It, it just looks way better, don't you think? It looks so beautiful. <laughs> way, <Hello>. way. <laughs> Man, I love how tall you are. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Well, come on, take a look. Yes. Let's enjoy it. Yeah. I feel really good. Usually, I don't like to look at the, in the back, yeah? Now, I just love it to stand and look outside. <laughs> he brought all the experts do the right thing, do the right job, and he did much more than I expected. It was amazing. Now, have you noticed we moved the air conditioner? Because yes. the air conditioner was down there and it was near your bedrooms, and this is the perfect location for it. But let me explain the venting. Yeah. This is now the new exhaust for the hot water heater in a very proper area, away from the windows, away from the door. And the same thing for your furnace, that we want it that is far enough apart that they don't compete and it does not compete with the air conditioner. So we can't put the air conditioner down here. It has to be away. So now everything is up to code for breathing, for exhaust, and it's the way it should have been done in the first place. So this here was a huge amount of work. Yes. We had a lot of rain this morning. There's no water in your basement. That's a real good sign. The roof is just an extra added bonus. Yeah. With designer shingles and uh, bringing in all the right people, I just love the look. If you notice, we've removed all your roof fence. And on the top of the peak, where the actual slope meets right to the top, is now a custom ridge vent, we call it. And that allows the attic to breathe from your soffit directly up to the ridge vent. So now that you have a new roof, you won't have to worry about your closet anymore. I'm happy. Are you happy? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> really happy. Really, really happy. Yeah. We even had Brian make up some custom roof caps there for Yeah. <laughs> your they flutes. look really good. Yeah, that's really not bad at all. He made those in the morning. <laughs> We have uh, um, when you labor come in and up near about the chimney. Look at the roof and look at the chimney. It looks so beautiful and look like a brand new house. <laughs> <laughs> now we can live our lives as, as normal and uh, be very proud of what we have here. I will stay um, here and then my ch children will stay here, my grandchildren will stay here. And I told them this is my home. Did it. That's what I want to hear. I yeah. <laughs> Hi, girls. Yeah. Is this for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a um, Chinese tradition. It's uh, called lucky money. It's for prosperity and also good fortune. This is very nice, thank you. Holy cow, you put a lot of money in there. Yeah. <laughs> Five, there we go. Nice. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank you. Keep yeah. smiling. Yeah. We'll see you. <laughs> this is the old patio stuff. This is a camera pad. <laughs> is that for you? Jerry's working. Uh, <laughs> wow. Please. Now, do you want a hand bring that to the bin? I could. Uh... Hey, how you doing? Is dinner ready yet? That's what you know. That's why I like them. It's like I'm downstairs. Can I get another beer? Neil and Michelle loved the house at first sight. Beautiful kitchen addition. Home inspection went well, and then problems started to rise once they moved in. Electrical issues, breakers going off, the floor freezing cold in the winter. There is more problems than they expected. I'm going to have to go in, and I'll make it right. Well, Michelle and I uh, met each other, and um fell in love and wanted to start a life together. Since we were getting married, we thought we should get a new house too. New marriage, new house. We spent quite a bit of time looking at houses. We looked at quite a few and we thought we found it uh, when uh, we came across this one. It's a great neighborhood, very nice, nicely looked after homes. The size of the house was perfect for us, just yes. the two of us. We really liked the, the, the ground floor layout, having a family room, a living room, a dining room, and this large 
garden kitchen. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like it was made for us. Our primary concern was this addition because knowing that it was added on, uh, it wasn't part of the original building, who knows how they built it. So we wanted to ensure, if there's anything we wanted assurance around, it was this addition. Mm -hmm. The inspector was very easy to talk to in that and I followed him around. I mean, he seemed like a knowledgeable guy. We looked outside and we looked inside and I asked questions mm -hmm. and um, he seemed to be able to answer them to our satisfaction. And by the end of it, he filled out a, a binder and you know made a few notes and told us uh, there were some minor things that needed to be looked after in the short term. So everything was okay, and so you know we said, okay, it's a go. Let's buy the house. As soon as the weather started getting cold, you could actually feel the cold resonating up through the floor. If you're standing at the kitchen sink, there's blasts of cold coming under the sink, and it really. Um, we thought this would be a wonderful, usable space, and um, it's ending up that we can really only use the main part of the kitchen, the original part of the kitchen. Michelle? Hi. Uh, Mike, nice to meet you. Neil? Yeah, great. Pleasure to meet you. We are extremely excited that he is coming in to help us out. Uh, we know he and his crew will do it right. Um, they are extremely professional, knowledgeable, skilled. Um, it's like winning a lottery. <laughs> now if we just take a walk outside first, since I have my coat on. Well, spring's coming, it's just not here yet. How old's the house? Uh, 28 years. Okay, so what do you know about this addition? Do you know if there's a permit? That yes, we did we check did. with the town. And? We checked with that, and there was a permit. That's and, good. And they... it passed inspection. Okay. We checked both of those things. Okay, see, that makes me happy. Yes. So we have bricks, so they tied it back into the house. I see the mortar joint in the corner, and I'd rather see some sort of a rubberized caulking rather than a mortar joint. If you notice, that joint is already cracking. Did they dig down, or do we just have, is it the kitchen's on grade? We uh, initially thought it was on grade, but I've since learned uh, through some investigative work of our own that it's actually on uh, a crawl space. Yes. And they've sealed off the crawl space? Yes. Yeah, we don't know that there's an access. We've never seen a way to get under there. I did not read about this in the report. This is an issue to me. I can tell where the addition starts because we have this beautiful display on the ceiling, but this was it here, right? So it was a small kitchen before. The kitchen was actually this area here. I'm gonna assume that the sink, there was a uh, back window here, probably a door. But the floor is cold. Because the floor is cold from the addition point where it started out to here, that tells me that we could have insulation problems or it could be just minimum cold, but I do feel a drastic cold here. Uh, the thermometer's in the corner here. And what is the temperature at? Last I checked, uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it looks like it's just, just over 60 degrees. So that it, it is, I'm gonna stand here for a second. And that is extremely cold in the corner. So when we find the differences of temperatures, this means we have a cool draft coming in somewhere. And it's usually underneath here, especially this corner. There's definitely a cool draft. I'm going to bring in some tools. We're going to see just how cold the area is. And it's actually a thermographic image camera. And it'll show right on the camera all the cold zones. And odds are, it's just a draft. Because it's amazing what a draft can do. Plumbing, it can actually yeah. freeze your plumbing. It could be insulated perfect, perfectly, but if we have that draft going across that area, it will freeze the pipes. It'll also freeze the floor. And what happens when the floor is cold? Your feet are cold and you're cold. Yes. You wear slippers. You don't have them on right now. I don't now. have them on right now, no. but my feet are cold. I can actually open up a three foot opening and not affect the structure. And I have access A to get in there, B to create a warm zone, a condition zone. In the fall we had um, a really nasty smell. One thing's for sure, if there's a dead critter, you're not missing a cat or anything, right? No. no. <laughs> you know, not only is the house cold, but you have electrical problems too, and then you start not feeling safe in your own house. What's wrong with the electrical? We've identified that this is a circuit that's got like 19 devices on it or something <laughs> like that. There was too many things on this one circuit. Right. It was not in the report. No. But we did have permits for the kitchen. Yeah. You checked. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you didn't check to see if there's electrical, did you? No. I will bring an electrician. I will check to see if there was an electrical permit. 
You said you closed off that one piece of duct line at the yeah, window. Yeah, the other duct, we had to close it off um, because in the fall we had um, a really nasty smell. You could actually smell it coming right out of the register. Like a dead animal? Yeah. yeah, and so we were just kind of going around smelling all the we registers. Had, we had a, we called in another duct cleaning guy. This is like, you know, two in a year now. And he said, That's, that smell is a dead animal. Let's go downstairs okay. so I can see downstairs. All right. This is where you opened up the ductwork to close it off? Yes, exactly. And you were saying this line was leading the smell or it's in this line? Well, I think it's in that line there. It's going into the... Into the crawl space. Yeah. You know, one thing's for sure, if there's a dead critter, you're not missing a cat or anything, right? No. no. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this is where I would have cut a hole into the foundation. If you're going to put on an addition, you definitely want a crawl space that is conditioned, much like your basement. The home inspector definitely should have been looking for access to the crawl space. I'll leave it there. I'm going to get my tools. I'm going to go through this house with a fine tooth comb. I'm going to check everything else just to make sure everything else is all right. But it, uh, I see enough that there's things that I can uh, jump on. And uh, when I open it up, I'll bring it back. OK. OK, and we'll show you what we found. OK. All right, and hopefully it's not a dead critter. Yes. Let's hold on. <laughs> yes. I'm going to start with uh, thermographic image reading of the kitchen because I think it's just a smart move. Temperature in the morning is nice and cold outside, and it's warm on the inside, so it gives me different readings here. We can see a very cold zone in the corner there, and I can actually point to it with the laser. The tiles are cooler. Well, watch this, OK? My hand's on the wall. And watch the difference. Right away, I'm warming that tile, and this camera will pick it up. He said the plug was really cold in the corner. I can see it clearly here. Looks are deceiving, right? You come in here, it looks really nice. No wonder they bought the house. They love the kitchen. They love the backyard. I listened to what they said. This, their oasis is in the backyard. So first vision is like, oh, this is beautiful. You know, there was permits on it. Everything is done. But you know, you put your hand up here. It's, it was. He talked about it later on. How I'm noticing things are wrong. That is a cool draft coming in there. I'm just looking at the connection from the existing house to the addition, and we have one hell of a cold spot on that wall. So all that dark blue is very cold. From the ceiling on this side of the kitchen to here, we have a difference of five degrees in Celsius. And we can see, by looking up, all kinds of cold spots right on the ceiling. So I want to take some pictures. Uh, documenting, because everything for me is about documenting. This here is the drain line that is to the island upstairs. And the problem with that is what do we see? It's running uphill. Water doesn't run uphill. Comes down from the sink, runs uphill, and then feeds down to the proper drain. They always leave two spare breakers in the panel, right? And that's the idea that if you do, you add something, a, an air conditioning, something like that. Now, this is obviously full. Now, the funny thing in here is that we did cut, a, I'm going to say that's a 30 amp line. Somebody's cut that off. I don't know where it leads to. We'll find out. I'll bring in Frank, my electrician. He's going to take a look at the place and see what not only the other contractor has done, but possibly what his Neil has done here. And when I talked to Neil, he talked about uh, the dishwasher was hooked up to other lines. Now, it shouldn't be. Uh, the receptacles on the counter are supposed to be on their own and should have been from the old kitchen. So where'd those lines go is my point. They all had their own lines before. Where the hell did they go? Neil disconnected the pipe, which I'm actually going to run my camera down to see if we do see a critter. This is a snake camera. We can actually stick this in a hole. And I have a good wide range of view. And it tells me the things that I need to know. What's on the other side of that? What's the depth of the floor? What I'm hoping not to see is actually a dead critter in there. And right from the distance that I'm looking now, I can't see beyond it. So if there is, it's a lot further than about four feet in. Let's try it from upstairs. In reality, it's not the inspector's job to do what I'm doing. It's the inspector's job to create a report based on what's right with the house, what's wrong with the house. I'm going to stage two. So rather than drilling downstairs, I chose to come up here and go through the register area. And it looks like the mice are having a wonderful home down there because we see the crap on the insulation right in the ductwork. I'm trying to find out how much distance I have underneath the floor joist to the bottom of the addition. 
and I'm hoping there's three feet because I know they had to go down four feet by code. I know for a fact they had to. So did they backfill it with earth all the way up and then put in the floor joists? Man, I hope not. I really do. It's a garbage site. It looks like it's full with all kinds of brick that they didn't use. Look at there's a nice coffee cup. And with all the crap that I'm seeing down there, all the stone, as it piled up, as it continued through, I don't know. And the fight is, is for me to tell Damon, go through the kitchen floor or go through the basement. You know, it's a pretty small addition. It's only about, say, 12 feet by about 16 feet. The things that I don't like is the downspouts, because we're going to have to worry about the downspouts actually bleeding into the weeping system. Now, being on the inside corner, it's going to make a water trap in this corner, which if there's too much rain here, it's going to penetrate into the foundation. What do we have here? We have <laughs> three pieces of sill. So what they've done here, minimum code says that you're supposed to cock these joints, OK? Mortar is not acceptable because what? It cracks, it will, it'll dry, it'll shrink. And this is the first area for moisture to get in. So if you see anything like this, get a caulking bead right over top of it. Actually, chisel it back just a bit so you can get a nice bead of caulking. The less water in the house, the better for me. OK, Damon. This is it. Oh, it looks good, eh? Yeah. So I was able to pull out the register over by the window over there. We got a hell of a cold floor here. Oh, so that's the issue? Yeah, well, uh, it's there's a crawl space under here yeah. that we can't get to. And I want you to open up a path in here approximately six by five. Not too much. Make sure the homeowners can get around, although after today they're going to be zoned out of here. Let's look at what needs to go to protect it. And okay. Plastic it up. Do they have something else they can use as a kitchen? Are they going to be here? Yeah, it's called a restaurant. <laughs> okay. You just put your hand across the wall. Oh, it is cool. Okay, so right here, and that happens to be the outside wall. Right. So I have a feeling he has no insulation here. Got our electricians in. Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing some wiring. We need our plumbers in. They're yeah. going to be doing some plumbing. We need our roofers in, Rob, and better contracting. They're going to have to pull the roof vent. I have a cold zone in the middle of the ceiling here. Yeah. And I don't want to cut the ceiling. We're still in, as far as I'm concerned, in inspection mode and determining by tomorrow morning yeah. what exactly we're going to do. I'm hoping to hell I don't have to pull all the cabinets. Well, yeah, I guess. But I have a bad feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah your good feelings are usually right. And it's a bad feeling. <laughs> Mike's asked us to come in and check out why we have a cold floor. That's where we do exploratory holes. Allows us to go in and fix the problem. You come in here, it looks really nice. The receptacles on the counter are supposed to be on their own. It should have been from the old kitchen. So where'd those lines go is my point. They all had their own lines before. Where the hell did they go? Wow, there's one hell of a draft here. Surprised it's not blowing my hair. We never enter a house without protecting everything of the homeowners. I mean, the worst thing you want to do is come in and fix something and break something else and, you know, have to fix that. Yeah, I want to go around the staircase. I don't want anything going upstairs. I don't want anything going in these rooms. That's what we do in every job. OK, so I've already marked out the floor. You're just going to chalk light it with me? Okay. Just start it off, and you just lower it on. Don't be afraid of it. We have a cold floor. Why do we have a cold floor? This is an addition. We don't know, really. I'm assuming it's improper insulation, holding the foundation. Mike's asked us to come in and check out why we have a cold floor. That's where we do exploratory holes, find out what's going on underneath, allows us to go in and fix the problem. Well, we have a dead mouse here, but I don't think that's the actual issue from the smell. Can we get a garbage bag for that? Really, we got to get right down in there, find out what's going on. Well, I can definitely see my breath down here. OK, that's probably enough for Mike to see for the, uh, the night. We're actually taking a patch out of the wall to look behind and do some exploratory work, see what's there. I tell you, I don't need to go to the gym because my arm is aching. <laughs> it's a good workout. There's the outside of the original house right there. That is freezing cold. That's almost, I can feel almost ice could form on that right now. There's no insulation behind this piece of framing right here. Obviously, insulating was not a priority here. 
we're trying to uh, we're trying to dig down four feet and see if we can find the footings for uh, the foundation. It's hard as rock. It's frozen clay, so I mean you can't get too much harder than that unless you, you're shoveling rock. So yeah, it's fun. Okay, only four feet, guys. We're not trying to find the bottom of it. I mean, if it ends up at two feet, stop there. I'm trying to find out how big that is. What we're going to do is we're giving them an access in the foundation inside the basement. I need to know how far that footing goes. I don't want to go underneath the footing, right? This will take us, I think, at least, when you say, another 20 minutes, half hour? It should be 40 minutes the way we're going. Well, we're basically done for today. That was a very quick job. We opened the floor for Mike. Uh, I got to bring him in now to see it. Uh, I have a feeling we'll be pulling the cabinets. Again, I'll, I'll let him make that call. I've opened up everything he needs to see. And let him come in tomorrow. Tell me what he wants me to do here. There's a hole in the floor. There is a hole in the floor, sir, as you asked. OK, we see some good things here. They did use plywood. It's very rare that I'm going to see anyone, any contractor, use a vapor barrier on top of the floor. But because they use plywood, they should use the vapor barrier. Now, you didn't find any critters, right? No, there's a couple of dead mice. Nothing really major. No dead raccoons, which was nice. Is that concrete or clay? That is clay. It was wet, and then it dried out. Uh, we're going to have other issues in the future of every time it rains too much, we're going to have that smell again. They're going to think there's a dead animal in there. Right. So uh, you're right. Today, you're going to pull the counters, okay. OK? No choice about it. Get the stove out, get the dishwasher out, get them in the garage, get them protected, wrapped up, wrap them like a birthday present, get the island out. So if we can win on a two-foot crawl space underneath the floor joist, yep. I'll accept that. But that means we've got to go another four inches plus rigid foam. So you're going to be at least, at least 30 inches yep. down from the bottom of the floor joist. And after we're done all here, yeah. which is going to take you a while, <laughs> yeah. that's when we'll start tying into the okay. basement and creating an access. Although this is past code and it was acceptable, this is not good enough. This is nothing but a problem waiting to happen. What if in the future that we solve all these problems and I don't create an access and I don't dig this down, we have a plumbing problem? Yep. How do you get to it? So we're going to make sure we thermal break the floor. Okay. We're going to rigid foam it. We're going to put a vapor bear on top of it to pour mm -hmm. concrete. We are going to spray foam the walls and we're going to fire rate it with a spray over top of that. You know this is like at least a day here, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, how about two? Yeah. yeah. If you can do it in one, I'm really surprised, and I'll buy everyone a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right? How about a coffee, guys, for that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get you a donut. Inside. I don't think I'll get you a donut, too. Come on. So have fun. Yeah, thanks a lot. Any problems? <laughs> Call me. OK. <laughs> Let's get this floor up. The flush here, make me a line. We're going to come two feet off each wall, cut the floor out, lift it, dig it out. There we go. OK, that's dangerous. We got a lot of digging to do. These guys are going to continue digging. I want to see more of this floor up. And this is what happens. This isn't just this small little area. It affects this whole room, which affects my baseboard. It affects everything we do in this kitchen. Everything. It's like a gut. We're re-renovating this whole kitchen. So that's where we're at. We were actually talking about that today, about hauling concrete and doing different dirty jobs and tough jobs. and. Really, this is just another job. The best part about my job is actually demo. It's the funnest part. And I'm just repeating you there, bud. Nice. <laughs> Demolition just, it's just dirty. It's no fun. Just having these joists in the way makes it that much more difficult, because then we get things like this, and we actually have to dig trenches. It's fun to be up here. It is. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like this position. You would. You've been standing like in that position all day. It's about time you get in the hole and start doing some work. Today's been good. Everybody. Steady working. Everyone's happy. Well, you know what the best thing about this is? They don't want the sink here anymore, so we're eliminating all of this. Uh, watch the hole in the floor. This was wow. for where your island was. <laughs> oh, wow. This isn't just this small little area. It affects this whole room, which affects my baseboard. It affects everything we do in this kitchen. Everything. It's like a gut. We're re-renovating this whole kitchen. I'm Michelle. Hello, folks. Neil. Hi. 
Come on in. Come look at what we've done so far to your house. All right. All right. I think we're making room for a hot tub, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, it'll be in your kitchen, though, if you don't mind. Okay. It's a bigger kitchen yeah. than we thought it was. <laughs> Uh, watch the hole in the floor. This was wow. for where your island was. We <laughs> oh, wow. When I first looked underneath it, I did find a ton of brick and it's so a little bit of garbage, nothing serious. The further we go, the more we see. So once it was opened, I said, OK, lose the canners. Uh, we're going to have to open it right up. And I want this dug down, and I'm going to explain why. If you ever had a leak, if you ever had to work on the electrical, you wouldn't have been able to get down there. But lo and behold, what does Damon find once he's pulling everything out? Ooh, they do have an access. Not a nice one. But... No, can you imagine being the guy to crawl through there? Yeah. So there was a way to get down there. Wow. That would have been really nice to tell you that once you bought the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, if you ever want to get down there, you yeah. go underneath yeah. the dishwasher. Because we did not find a critter in the duck park, I'm going to assume that when you had the smell, it was raining outside. Was it raining? Yes, yes. OK, well, what's in your floor? It's clay and they did not seal your foundation. Problem is, is that it's gonna allow water to get into the earth. What I'm gonna make sure we do is to relocate the downspouts. That'll require new east trough on the back side of this house, pulling the downspout to the outside of the deck. When water mixed with clay, it smells like not only the toilet, okay, but add a little bit of uh, kill factor in there of an animal. Mix the two together and you're like sniffing through everywhere. It's literally coming from the earth. What I'm gonna make sure we do is that we dig this down. We thermal break the floor by putting down two inches of rigid foam. We then put in a vapor barrier over top of the rigid foam and we pour a concrete pad. Then I'm gonna cut an entrance in your basement and the foundation wall to get into it in case ever anything ever happened. And we are going to solve the small problems on the wall on this side. We're gonna repair your electrical and the flooring. New floor. We still have a ton of things to do. But after all this is said and done, it will be toasty warm, you will be totally comfortable, and trust me, it will look the same. Maybe a new countertop or two. That sounds great. Okay. Fantastic. Our Thank job you. is done for now. Thank Damon, you. is uh, you are in good hands. Right. Damon is gonna take Thank the solar, you. and uh, we'll at the end of it, bit, We'll come back and take a really good look at it and jump in the hot tub together. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to serve me, right? All right. <laughs> if I have to, I cook a mean steak on the barbie. All right. All right. Sounds good. OK. How you doing? Pretty good. So? Good, man. Things like your dishwasher, things like your counter plug need their own breaker. Right. They do have a heavier load. So what they've done here is simply done the addition and tapped off whatever circuit was available. So every time they want to use the coffee maker and the dishwasher at the same time, they trip the breaker downstairs. But I do need to string new lines from here yeah. and bring them into that area and redo okay. the counter plugs. And yeah. I have to redo the uh, dishwasher. The microwave uh, receptacle yeah. is also done incorrectly. Yeah. And uh, that counter plug uh, that was on the island yeah. was gross. So are we uh, just dealing with the kitchen at this point? The entire kitchen is where I'm going to start. Yeah. At the end of the day, my opinion is going to be that whoever did that renovation, yeah. they there's no way that they pulled out a uh, right. contractor to this work. We're fixing the floor, which means we're fixing the plumbing. He obviously did it all. Now we're fixing the electrical. Same guy. Exactly. Well, what we're doing here is uh, we're pulling a line for the uh, One's going to be for the counter plug, and the other one's going to be for the dishwasher. How many? How much more, Dave? That's all? We still have to pull uh, one more for the uh, other counter plug and for the microwave hood fan. Well, we got a big day happening here today. We had uh, all this dug out as of Friday, and uh, it was a huge job. It took us about three days to get this all out. I think everyone's a little tired, including myself. I have Carl here. He's actually grading the gravel a little bit. Three o'clock, concrete comes in. After that, we can do some blocking, strengthen this right up. I had uh, Team BB come in. That's what I like to call them. It's Bubbers and Bear. That's Sherry and MJ's nickname. They're, uh, you know, brother and sister, and we have little nicknames for them. So I have them working as a team on this wall. Uh, so they're popping the tile. I also have to cut a hole in this foundation wall. What we had to do was give them a proper crawl space. We want this space heated, so what we're gonna basically do here is open up a hole right here. It's a doorway to acclimatize this room to the existing house. We want this area warm, same as the basement in the existing house. Yeah. 
I'm just putting in the uh, the joist hangers here for the added support that was originally required that should have been put in um, by the by the original contractor. Joist hangers are, are a code requirement on anything um, anything that's basically suspended. Um, if it's if it's a cantilever over four feet, um, you're required joist hangers. And this this span here is uh, almost 12 feet with no support under either side. So this plate here, it's where they started their new floor joists. And it's just what I'm doing is I'm putting the lag bolts through this plate and then the plate behind it to attach the old floor joists to the new ones to make it one solid structure. Keep it from bouncing and squeaking. Uh, we have concrete coming in two hours. I got to get all the dirt off this. I have to level this ground. I have to get my, start, uh, my two inch rigid foam down. Okay. I have to get my vapor barrier. And then I have to get my mesh on. So we're in a bit of a rush here. I'm just trying to get everyone going. Thanks, Sheriff. I need a piece uh, 49 inches here, Carl, please. Okay, guys, concrete is here, so let's get that done as quick as possible. I want to start laying the mesh on this side. By the time we get over to you, Carl, you guys should be done, okay? Oh, well, we're just going to set the boom up uh, outside of the front door and then run uh, some pipe and some hoses in and uh, hopefully fill up the hole they have in the back of the house there. Carl, when you're taping this plastic, absolutely no gaps in the tape, right? so concrete doesn't get under it. Thank you. So we're really in a bit of a rush to uh, get this all finished and done properly. Well, we're getting in the last of our mesh here. Uh, we do have concrete here. We're about to start pouring any time. So we can run in this hose right now. <laughs> Here's your list for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, guys, concrete is here. So let's get that done as quick as possible. I want to start laying the mesh on this side. By the time we get over to you, Carl, you guys should be done, okay? a special case when you're going into an existing house. Well, you have to deal with things and what's in the house. I mean, uh, when you pump the concrete, it's under a lot of pressure. Um, you don't want to have a hose blow or get a hole or make a mess because it can very easily plug up. Oh, it stopped right there, eh? It's like right here somewhere. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine. I want at least four inches of concrete. I know I have a six inch styrofoam curb here, so I'm just looking for my two inches all the way around. The concrete used in today is called Jillia. It's a self-leveling, very flowable concrete. A situation like this where we can't get down into the into the pit, we're gonna be able to uh, finish it much quicker, much easier. Everything self-levels. No troweling, everything's done from above. Let's dump the hose, I think we're pretty well there. We'll take the rest of it and call it a day. Okay. okay? Well, this is a laser level. This gives me an accurate measurement around the whole room without using a level. We're laying a floor over this. It's a wooden floor that's got to be connected to each other. So if you have a dip in the floor, you're actually going to see that seam when it give. It's about an eighth off from, uh, from the high point. Yeah, they had it pretty much right. OK, that's not that big of a deal. OK, let's start dealing with this. Let's get this strip up, and I want to see what this floor looks like. Looking at 28, 28, or 24, 28, or? I'm looking at 28 by whatever that height's okay. gonna be with a four inch curb, okay? okay? Now, what I wanna do is put a hole into where our crawl space is gonna be to acclimatize that area to the house temperature. 
Exactly. This engine, it's a, it's a large engine. The machine itself is really heavy, and it's producing a lot of carbon monoxide. So I need to have a lot of exhaust going out. So I'm hoping for fresh air to come in, and a lot of the carbon monoxide that gets put out from the machine and the concrete dust has to actually be pulled out. It's really important because, you know what, I got a heavy saw here. I'm going to be doing a serious cut. The saw could actually kick back. What the blocking's going to do is it's, uh, it's actually going to lock the floor together. Um, so that instead of one joist absorbing all the shock and all the bounce, it, the whole floor is going to be locked tight and take it all. And it's really going to strengthen it and take the flex out. Fourteen and three eighths, please. I'm, uh, I'm drilling a one inch hole every six inches or so because uh, we want to get some spray foam in behind here because it's a, it's a big cold zone and we're losing a hot, lot of heat from the, this area. If you put your hand here, you can actually feel the draft because this is where the addition and the old part of the house meets. We have Alex coming real soon. What I'm going to get him to do is probably spray about uh, two and a half to three inches of uh, spray foam right around on these walls and give it a complete thermal break. This is why we brought up our insulation, our rigid insulation above our concrete, so that when his insulation hits it, it ties it right in and it stops any cold from coming in here. If you miss a certain point, let's say you miss a small corner with insulation, you're basically taking the value out of everything else you've done because you're letting in the cold out in that one area. So I want him to hit everything possible, and he always does. He does a great job. It's going to be a two-step process. They're going to do their uh, three inches, two and a half, three inches of spray foam right around the edge, and then they're going to come back into a fire retardant right over top of that. Insulation always has to be protected. So whether it's with drywall or whether a fire retardant, they're going to actually put a fire retardant on here because it's a crawl space. Two, three. Uh, it's going great now. You know what? The most labor-intensive part of this job was digging out that hole. Uh, the job itself was, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. We're coming to the end of it now. Uh, we have our foreign hardwoods going in. You know, once you see hardwood going in, it's a finish. You know you're coming to the end of it. So, uh, you know, I'm sort of giving it a little push here. I want to try and, uh, you know, get it done in the next couple of days. You know, nothing wrong with getting it done a little earlier than we said. Nothing wrong with that at all. Here. You want me up there? Come on. I'm a carpenter, not a roofer. Yeah, buddy, this is all the action is. What's we'll going on? I want to pull this off. Yeah. Cheap as bench. Let's see what we have in there, bud, for one sec. There better not be raccoons in here. Well, it looks like pretty good insulation up here. I just missed it down below. I don't think we're going to need much more in there. So, uh, what about the rest of the roof? You got half the water from the upper roof draining there right. on this side. And on the other side, you got an inside corner as well. Yeah. Not as much water, but still the same problem. So divert everything to the backyard, get it away from the foundation. Yeah. All right, as long as we get that out of the ground, yeah. bring it to the backyard. OK, let's lift that into place, please. There. One sec, go down. OK, that's my arm. Sorry. Thank you. the inspector, we trusted his judgment, that he was professional and expert and would give us the information that we needed. He did a few things wrong, right? So we have to look into the electrical. We have to look into why this floor is cool. Do I have to open up this wall? Do I have to open up that wall? Uh, now we start talking about the floor. How do I get down there? Kid. Okay. 
This is what I call a crawl space. This is what it should have been in the first place. Well, we've eliminated three things. We've eliminated smell, we've eliminated the moisture, and we've eliminated the cold. Uh, what we've done here is given them a proper crawl space, heated, uh, we've insulated all the sides, we've fireproofed the insulation, we've put concrete on the ground, we've cut a hole to acclimatize this area to the existing house, and we also brought in heat just for added warmth. We're actually gonna put a light in here for them as well for any future use. I would use this as storage as well as a crawl space for any maintenance in the future. I think uh, my job here is almost done. Okay, that lines up perfectly with that doorway and I want to give them maximum room here. I've got about 72 and a half to that corner there. You know what we might have to do is just pull it forward just a bit. Try not to drag it too much. That's, that's not bad. Whoa, 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 come back. Joe, how you doing, bud? Almost there. Good, you leaving those out a little bit for me so yeah. I can pull them out? Leaving them out and taping them up. Everything's in place. I'm in tile stage. I can't even actually believe this. I'm actually laying tile right now, so. I've got a little surprise for Sherry. I've sent her out to the store right now. She's actually gonna learn how to do tiles. Sink or swim, I say. The Sherry Holmes. There you are. Uh, you're gonna help me do some tiles, okay? So I'm gonna teach you the basics on how to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna butter the wall. We're gonna trowel it with our 3 8 trowel. And then you're gonna take your trowel and you're gonna back butter it. Basically, you're putting the adhesive on the wall and on the tile for a full grab. You're the installer, I'm the laborer right now. <laughs> you like that, eh? You wanna make sure you put it on the wall firm, okay? Give it a little slap. Let's give it a little. Now spacers, you want one at the bottom of the top and that squares up your tile to the tile before it, okay? Keep putting them on. And we're gonna go back and level them after, okay? We wanna get a few on. There's no sense leveling every tile. That's a waste of time, right? Getting you more stuff. Oh, my money. Yay! Ah, that looks real good. Yeah, it is nice. So who did the tile? Uh, Sherry did the tile. Adam did some cuts for her, but otherwise she laid them. She was doing it. Good job, buddy. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're happy. I think they're going to like it. I think they will, too. Yeah. And we have nice brackets on the yeah. outside of this. Perfect. And they beefed it up just to give it a bit of support underneath. Yeah, that's just a smart move. Love it. Let's go get them. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Long time no see. Yes, nice to see you. How are you doing? How are you? Good to see you, Michelle. Good. Neil? Damon? How are you? Good to see you. You too. Sir Neil? Mike? Long time? <laughs> Come on. Let's okay, go great. See. All right. Good. Actually, what I want to do is that we're going to walk by the kitchen, so sort of ignore the kitchen because I want to take you downstairs first and we'll talk downstairs. Okay. So ignore the kitchen, okay? Okay. Follow me. Let's start off with the panel here. Joe, he really separated everything and had to run a couple of new lines and, and made sure that the dishwasher is on its own, the fridge is on its own, the receptacles were proper all the way. Uh, he also itemized everything, all the breakers. We want to know what they are. And the best thing I love about this, there's two of them. One being that we have a total surge protector on your house. And on top of that, something new that I'm not used to is we have this little sticker on the box here, right here. And that sticker is because the ESA came in to inspect oh. the electrical. They marked the box. This is a new system. And it's, okay. they can identify through the number that somebody was here and okayed it. So Great. it's all been passed. Oh, good. And I'm happy. It's cleaned up. So let's look at the hole we put in your wall because we okay. did put a hole in your wall. We have a beautiful uh, Agilia floor, which is a, the best concrete on the market. It's a self-leveling concrete. And underneath that concrete, we have a thermal break. And I keep talking about that thermal break. Stop hot from eating cold. So it's rigid foam. Now, Alex and his boys came in. They sprayed the uh, foam, the uh, wall tidy go on the walls, and then a fire retardant spray goes over oh. top of it. So that's why it looks kind of rough. It looks like mm -hmm. concrete. It's uh -huh. not. It's a fire retardant spray. Okay. And we have to do that to make sure that it can never catch a flame or uh, anything like that. So you can go in there and play. It can be a playhouse, it can be anything you want. <laughs> or storage, 
No, I like it. I like it as storage. They checked your ductwork, ran the new lines that had to be in, ran the new hotline, and then they actually put in a lint trap off your dryer. Wow. So I'm really happy about that. Well, that's great. That, that was unexpected. That's awesome. Now we can see your kitchen. All right. Yay. OK, yeah. let's go on. Let's go. Oh, that was a big oh thing, my God. Yeah. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. Oh, come on. It's a kitchen. No, this is not our kitchen. <laughs> you picked the countertop, right? I like it. I like the countertop. Oh, it's my God. It's beautiful. You picked the color? Yeah. Bluish gray. Wow. Well, come on and take a look. Wow, look at the backsplash. Sherry did the backsplash. Wow. This really? was her first tile job, and I'm really, really impressed. Chris came in. He put, oh. it, he put the floor that you wanted in here. Beautiful. Made sure that you had a receptacle in the right location here that would Great. be underneath the microwave. Uh, two switches receptacle, proper receptacle, nice and warm with your bell line. Now, you remember this wall over here? This wall was my camera. I think we talked about it before. My camera picked up a huge cold zone right here, right. and I said that's where the addition was. Right. Well, sure enough, that's where the, stud, the studded structure was with no insulation. They so we did that void and they drilled holes and they were actually spray their own product in behind that as well. There is no difference of temperature from one side to the other and I can feel it on my hands and that means we did something right. So here's the test. Take your shoes off. Okay. Walk on the floor. <laughs> All right. If this was before, we would be cold right now. I don't feel any cold. This, this is not anything like it felt before. This is amazing. We did move the downspouts out and directed to the outside of the flower beds, away from the house, away from the foundation. Something small, something simple, something smart. Truth is, is underneath it all is the most important thing, and that's what we took care of. That's the things you don't see. You know? So it's I'm, at least you have a smile on your face for what you do see, uh -huh. I'm happy. If the home inspector actually knew about construction, he would have uh, warned you about there's no crawl space. Yeah. I have no entrance to this crawl space. There's definitely issues with electrical, and you found that out on your own, didn't right. you? Mm -hmm. To miss the really important things that can cost so much money right. is why we're here to say we need to make this right. We need to look into this and make a better home inspection that is a better peace of mind for you too. It's no longer going to stink, be cold, or be an issue. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you. Our jobs are done. No. Oh, okay. so, Thank you. I sound like I get paid. Ooh, thank, thank you. you so now David much. wants some pay too. Uh, yeah. Neil? All right. All right. All right. Fantastic. Great. Great work. We're really, really happy. All right. Oh, you're welcome. Push. Push. <laughs> Show Michelle which way the beach is. No. Yes, yes. Show me the beach. Which way is the beach? Which way is the beach? Come on. Where's the light you fixed? Come on. Come on. Right, Kevin and Gail fell hard for this house. They were smart. They brought in a home inspector to do a proper home inspection before they buy. They wanted to buy a house that was renovated so they didn't have to do work. As a matter of fact, 10 different families bid on this house. They were thinking the same thing. I get it. People see that and they want to move in. My point is, was it done right? As far as I'm concerned, it is the home inspector's job to give the homeowners the right advice to tell them. Buy this house, it's good. Run like hell, it's not good. Guess what? There is a problem. I'm here to do a homes inspection, and I'm going to make it right. It's taking a while for us to find the ideal home, because he had certain standards that he wanted, and I had certain standards. And actually, when we found this house, it was a combination of what we both wanted, which is great. My daughter, she's 14 years old, um, very independent. One of the reasons we um, like this house so much, it's two minutes away from her new high school. We wanted it to give her a bigger space. We thought she deserved that. I love the fact that it was located downtown. I love the new hardwood floors, the new stainless steel appliances. I love the fact that it was renovated. The initial open house when we came to see this house, it was like a shopping mall. So it was surreal. When I first laid eyes on this place, I was pretty impressed. It looked perfect to us. Our real estate agent told us before we make an offer to get an inspection. We walked through the house with him, and I mean, he seemed pretty knowledgeable. He um, pointed out very few things that we might need to fix in the future with the house, but all in all, he pretty much said it was a sound house. We went in guns blazing, believing that this is the, the top house, and we paid top dollar for it, on his word. Hi. 
must be Gail. Nice to meet you. you must be Kevin. Pleasure to meet you. Nice neighborhood. A little cool, huh? but it's, I can feel the heat here. That's good. <laughs> We initially came into this house expecting to furnish it a certain way, make it into a home, and unfortunately, our money that we were gonna take to make this house into a home is now going to additional renovations, to fixing up problems that were here and should have been pointed out to us before we purchased the house. And I have to start with this. Mm -hmm. It's the best report I've read to date. You took pictures. Right. You documented each picture he took, you made comments. Unfortunately, there was things missed. Yes. Yes. Like yes. Termites. My daughter actually mentioned she thought it was a caterpillar hanging from the ceiling and told Kevin about it. It just looked like a spike of mud coming through the ceiling. I touched it. It fell to the chair below, and um, the dirt turned into creepy crawlies. Scared the life out of me. You did have it checked. Yep. So we brought in, I think, Orkin? Orkin. Okay, right. and they did a full inspection. Full inspection. Mm -hmm. And they determined that it's in the basement area only? The basement area and to the back where the extension is in the house. Yeah. Why don't we take a walk downstairs? Sure. sure. And uh, we'll take it from there. Within half an hour, that spike had reappeared. It was like something out of a horror movie. When the termite inspector showed up, he was great. He took us around the house and showed us actually evidence of termites that our house inspector should have noticed. He missed the damage on the door. He missed the mud tunnel on the back of the house by the staircase. I mean, me, I'm, I'm not an inspector, but after a little bit of research, I know what it is. He also missed all the soil to wood contacts on the side of the house, and that's a clear indicator that you might have a problem. Okay, we've taken a look at all kinds of various Look at that. Well, I might as well take a look at it. Okay. Great example. This was done not too long ago, all this work. Look what they covered up, okay? I'm seeing rotten stuff, I'm seeing concrete, I'm seeing wood, that's wood, touching earth. Wood touching earth brings in termites. Uh-oh, that's not a good sign. Look at all that on the bottom of that wood right there. You see the trails? That's termites. See that vertical piece of two by four? Not the new one, the old one that's been painted. It's all eaten apart by the termites that have gotten into the wood. Termites come from the ground up through the wood and come in contact to your house. Wood is touching soil. They have their way of getting in. And once they get in, that's when much like animals of any type of critters can do damage. Right. Lots of damage. I avoid the basement at all costs. I don't like looking at it. I don't like, I don't like bugs at all. And being around that environment, I, the only reason I go down in the basement is pretty much to do laundry, and that's about it. Unfortunately, I'm the guy that's coming in afterwards, and I'm doing an inspection. But it's not like uh, a standard home inspection. We call it a homes inspection, because now I'm going to look. I'm going to cut holes. I'm going to have people come in. I'm going to verify everything. Okay, you see that right there on the camera? I'm about to get in there. There it is. That is a trail of termites. The inspector, look at their jobs to come in and see what they can see, right? And if it's all closed in, they can't see it. Good report. Not enough experience. So how does he know to look for termites? Well, that's easy. When wood touches earth, the odds of termites coming in are big. Now we're gonna take it all apart. There we go again. Look at this damage. Like these joists are getting eaten. This is nuts. Look at that. That's how much they've eaten through. When we bought this house, we paid the additional money thinking that we wouldn't have to put anything extra into the house. Like all the renovations were done. Our fears with Mike's inspection is that he's going to find a whole heap of stuff that everybody's missed and that our home will be exposed to the garbage and fancy wrapping paper. Now, if 
you notice, your handles are really made for short people. Yes, Did you notice that? <laughs> uh, what happens is, is when we're trying to finish a basement and they come in and people don't know what they're doing. This is a fast fit door. It's a hollow core door. Right. Yes. The handle was probably a preset. Right. Okay, so they came in and cut the bottom right off. Oh, I see. Wrong doors installed. That's the point. So when I see the little things that are done, then I worry about the bigger things. The home inspector said there's a substance that might be asbestos wrap, I believe is the way he worded it in the report. He said eventually in the future, a few years from now, it would cost a few thousand to get rid of it, and we were fine with that. I read in the report there was tape wrapped around the pipe, yes. right? Yes. This is what I call a cover-up. Mm. I'm pretty damn sure, and I'm right, what they did was they taped up the asbestos. Oh. Because right? I can see right through here, and I can see the asbestos. And it's been messed with. All right, so there's one problem right there that is a big problem. The initial problem that I noticed was the flooding in the basement and the sewage that was backed up. Actually, it was raining pretty hard that day. I immediately got up and noticed that the drain was overflowing in the middle of the basement. Ran to the bathroom, and the shower stall started overflowing, and it looked like sewage coming out of the drain. I had no idea what was going on. Smelling that, I mean, pretty nasty. Needless to say, we started panicking. I called my handy father. He advised me to pull the downspout out of the ground, and it seemed to stop the initial flooding. It kind of burst our bubble pretty quickly. In the report, oddly enough, for one of the best reports I've ever read, oddly enough, it said the downspouts are into the house system. No comment. He wrote no comment mm -hmm. on, on, I guess, what to do with it, because he didn't, because he said he couldn't see it. Well. I see the downspouts down there. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, it can and will damage your foundation. Take it out. And everyone should be doing that. Now, now that you pulled this out, look at the moisture that's coming in this area, right? And look at this line here. This tells me you're gonna have water penetrate that point to the foundation on the inside, which now concerns me with possibilities of mold. And I'm gonna tell you, you know, you need to seal all this. Cracks like this right here, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my tools. I'm going to go through the house. Okay. I'm going to see what I find, because I got a bad feeling. I'm going right. to bring it back. I'm going to tell you what I found. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to fix it. Thank you very much. And Thank you. we will make it right. Thank you so Thank you. much. Keep smiling. When Mike said he had a bad feeling about this inspection, I had an even worse feeling, because to be honest with you, everything that we've checked into on this house has always led to something else. It's just a chain reaction that I'm yet seen end at any one point. It just keeps on going. One thing I didn't see in the report, what's the height of this bottom step to here? That's approximately five inches. From here to here is approximately seven and continues. So all the height of the riser is correct, except for the bottom one. The other issues that I see is I know for a fact that this addition did not have stairs before. 1952, we had checked. So somebody years ago has used this as a, a residential unit. The stairs are in pretty rough shape. Who cuts a throat? That shallow right here, that's what we call the throat. That's not a lot of space to take weight load against the stairs, and that's why they've had to add in extra supports throughout to hold it. Personally, what I'd like to do is take them off. The home inspector had a great camera, and he should have taken a picture of that. Trying to solve all this is not going to be easy, because we have a wood cladding on the outside of this. There's not a lot of space here. And the wood cladding on the outside that is down to grade. When wood touches earth, the odds of termites coming in are big. And we look at the door. It's a little short. We know that. It's just the way it was done. Now, is this moisture, or is this termites? Or is it both? It is falling apart. It is both. I didn't see a picture of this in the report. Hello? Mr. Bennett. You ever heard the saying, here we go again? Yeah. OK, so the plumbing in the floor backed up in the shower. I can see it's an inch and a quarter line coming straight up yeah. with a three-inch uh, excussion plate on the yeah. top. I know the drain's wrong. Come here and look at this. 
That is asbestos, and it's sitting, it's wrecked, it's pulled down, it's knocked down, and it's sitting on top of the bulkhead here. So now I'm kind of really worried. I don't want you guys touching this. OK. Let's, let's bring in Alliance. I want them to remove it, and I want Pynchon in here to make sure that there's no spores in the air for my team yeah. for okay. when we come in. Absolutely. OK? So let them do it. I don't, give, I don't care if they wreck this place, because we're going to. Right. Then you can come in. You can take the rest down. You want to take this down all of this? You're gutting it. And why is that? We have termites. Let me show you. We got termites down here. Let's take a look in this hole. Now, see how the wood, uh, straight ahead on the other end, we see a vertical 2 by 4 that's new and a vertical 2 by 4 that's beside it. Oh, yeah. It's painted. And it has been eaten by termites. You see that? Yeah. So, you know, um, we're going to learn a lot more about termites. One thing's for sure is that we have it. And uh, what we're going to learn is how to get rid of them. Yeah. So there's a chance, a small chance, they could just be located down here right now. Uh, uh, my hope is they're only right here. Yeah, mine too. But they're here. Yeah. More than likely here. Yeah. More than likely here. They're there. It's like us living in a giant cheeseburger. We're going to eat our way out. I, I kind of like that idea, to be <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. It's like a cheeseburger island. I'm in. So here we are again. I'm in a beautiful house, but a house with a lot of problems, a lot of issues. First of all, we have asbestos in the ceiling. I have Alliance Environmental here today enclosing the whole room because we have to get it remediated. And then we can start dealing with the other issues. First things first. Basically, asbestos is, uh, is fine as long as you leave it alone. Uh, in the absence of disturbance, there's really no hazard associated with the presence of asbestos building materials within your house. If you're doing some kind of work, whether it be renovation work, maintenance work, those kinds of things where you're going to be disturbing other building materials, you may impact the asbestos. And then once it's disturbed, it can create a problem. There are three major diseases associated with the inhalation of asbestos, asbestosis, um, lung cancer, and mesothelioma. That is the main concern with asbestos, is inhaling the asbestos fibers. Today, uh, there are less incidents of asbestos, but it is still, according to statistics, uh, one of the leading causes of death in the construction industry. The asbestos is now fully remediated, and we've been given a clean bill of health on the house. At this point, I can now get rid of the termites and fix the damage they've done. Hey, Cliff. Oh, this is probably my second time in here. Yeah, you were here on the initial, and you confirmed that there was termites down here, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, we are going to demo this basement. How bad is it down here? No termites, way. doesn't matter if you see one tunnel or if you see 100 tunnels. It's bad. Now, that is a damaged piece of wood. Certainly, yeah. This is destroyed. And that's what you're looking at when termites come in. This is termite damage right away. Oh, there they are. Look at that. There they are. Oh, my yep. god. See the termites. Look at that. See them traveling back and forth there? That is incredible. There's a live one. Nice big one for you right here. Look at that. And just for a little tiny termite like that, they can cause so much damage. It's right. Unreal. They're traveling through that soil all the time looking for wood. And if that wood is in the soil itself, they're going to smack dab right into that wood. If that wood is uh, basically attached to your home, you're going to have a lot of damage in your home. Now, the all my crew is worried about bringing these home with them. They're no not worries. going to do any damage. No worries about them getting them on the clothes, bringing them home, None whatsoever. eating their own homes? No, no. Because once they contact right. light, you can pretty much say the termite is gone. Is that right? Yeah, because they're full of moisture. Yeah. Their body is like 80 85% moisture, and they need that to survive. Well, with termites, we actually look for tunneling in the walls, tunneling in the baseboards, any of the facings on the windows, uh, any penetration through the walls, things like that. And what we're looking for is tunneling. They're called mud tubes. Mud tubes are uh, tunnels that the termites will actually hide inside of. Oh, this is a clear t uh, sign of uh, a termite tunnel, an old termite tunnel. It was scraped off. So uh, by looking at this, I can see that the tunneling is coming down towards this piece of 2 by 4 
the termites will actually bring it up through the earth and they will make a tunnel all the way through the walls. Uh, it's more like a protection for them. They need moisture inside the tunnels and protects them from any bugs whatsoever. They can actually destroy the wood and leave the mud there behind. Yeah, it's clearly termite damage here. So they, uh, they ate this and went back down. See? This could be soil underneath here. Perfect way for termites to come through. So the inspector should have noticed this as well. So he should have had a bug inspector in. What we'll do is we'll drill holes into the floor, all the way around the house, interior perimeter and the exterior as well. And what we'll do is we'll put a chemical in each hole. The colony is on the outside, and we put a chemical barrier around the outside. What's going to happen is the termites that's still inside, they won't be able to get back on the outside. So what will happen is they're going to start dying off. Hey, man. Yes, sir. I may have some answers for you. This this condition is, is just so poor, my camera won't even go through it, so. Well, uh, I see mud. What is this on the side? Is that is that earth? What is this? This is this is this is debris and sediment that, oh, that build up. Yeah. Uh, so it, it just indicates that there must have been some backups in the past. Obviously it was not rectified. And, so uh, what does this mean exactly? Does that mean I gotta dig up this floor now? Yeah, this floor needs to be repaired. Uh, because even though we don't have a downspot connected into the ground anymore, you need to have a floor drain that's in a good operating condition. This floor drain needs to be repaired. Uh, I do have a concerns with that stack. Um, obviously, where cast iron meets clay, yeah. I've seen I've seen cracks on the camera. So, if, again, you know, if we're going to be excavating this area, we're not too far from there. I would like to address that as well. Um, plus, sorry to be breaking the bad news. Okay. <laughs> we have another stack right behind us. Yeah. And, and uh, clear signs of aging. Oh, look at that cracks. crack. And obviously no clean out, so I cannot even inspect this line properly. Has this been leaking? This has been leaking, yeah, for a while. Plumbing is actually quite intensive here. I need to talk to Mike. No Give problem. Give me a couple of days, buddy. No problem. Well, this confirms my uh, one of my worst fears is that we have termites within the joists. You can see they've actually eaten into the joists here. I don't know if it's too bad right there, but if they're there, where else are they? Oh, my God. Look at this damage. These joists are getting eaten. This is nuts. That is deadly. Look at that. That's how much they've eaten through. Two by eight. Like no, it's a two by four. Yeah, not even now. Let me see what's behind door number two. Oh, you got him, Joe. This is nuts. Like what's behind here. Look at that. Through my damage. Through the lath. How far does this go? What's bothering me the most, well, look what they've hit. They've hit framing after framing, scab after scab, pieces of plywood, pieces of Old siding scabbed on over termite damage. Everything has been covered over here to sell this damn house. What does that leave them with? These are the first time home buyers buying a house with a child. He cut a lot of corners to sell the house to make it look pretty. Holy sh! Oh, don't do that. No, 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 no. That's earth, buddy. That's yeah. earth, OK? Yeah. You know what this means? What's this foundation sitting on? Nothing. I'm more than disgusted. This is it's really bad. There's my outside sheeting. They're buying outdoor siding filled with termites, water damage, possibly mold. And what is this? This is where the earth is. This is where grade is. This is what my structure sits on. This is earth coming into the house. It was a matter of time before this whole side would have come in from water hitting it. This was gonna fail eventually at their cost. There's so many issues in this one little area. I'm afraid to tear down anything else. I'm really afraid of what to tell them. Not only is it gonna bury us, but it's gonna bury the homeowners eventually. 
it's upsetting for everybody. Carlito, move that floor a bit, please. Oh, yeah. Okay, not too much more, bud. That's good. I can see right in the bathroom, and I can actually see you. This is Earth. This is what they've done to Earth. They've spray foamed over it. This is the access. This is the highway to let the termites in. I guarantee it. Who does this? Uh, no one that I would ever meet or know. Like, how do you cover this up? That's what You're I a contractor. Know, you know. come in, you say, yeah. OK, you got problems here. I really think this was a flip on this house. I think the guy that owned this house, we think it was a rooming house before due to the neighbors uh, saying that it was. I think he just tore everything out, covered it with spray foam, just covered everything over, sold the house, did a complete fast finish on this place. You're calling it a flip. And got out of Dodge. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Wow. What an illusion for these homeowners. 10 bids on the house. Yep. They get There's the a, highest. A bidding war on this place. Yeah, bidding war. Believe it. Yeah, the only war I'd be giving is like a civil war. Yeah. I'm not buying it. No. Let's grab the homeowners. Let's bring them down. Let's tell them about it. Oh my god, they're not ready for this. I don't think anyone's ready for this. Let's hope they survive it. Now watch your head. Oh, yeah. wow. In your hand, step, step, take your time. Watch nails, wow. watch everything. All right. And you can see how far we've gone. This has uh, become a, a structural issue, plumbing issue, uh, major, major, major issues. The house is a lemon. This is way worse than any one of us thought, including myself. When Mike said I bought a lemon, I felt like somebody punched me in my stomach. Just actually, there's a few fears when you're buying a house, and I think we've encountered all of them, yeah. every last one of them. So all your drains in the floor, everything needs to be replaced, all plumbing in the floor. We need to do an interior weeping system, which I don't like doing, but we don't have a choice because we cannot get to the outside of this wall. Now, this is a great example is if you're going to finish your basement, start by gutting it, readdress the issues, the plumbing. It's an old house. Change the plumbing. Because you don't want to go and finish the floor, tiles, bathroom, walls, and then something happens when you're sitting on the couch and it backs up. That's because they didn't address that. And here's how foolish these people were. There was asbestos in the house. They didn't mind disrupting it, playing with it. They did all this work around. They probably all breathed it in. Didn't even care. Cover it up, cover it up. Spray it, cover it up, cover it up. Sell it. And we brought in a team of specialists to remove all the asbestos that was all around the pipes. We have no vent, no air behind water, so all the plumbing we see here, wrong, totally incorrect. And this is nothing. This is the small stuff to me. Let's look at the structure. I'm angry right now. I'm very, very, very angry. I um, feel like we've been taken advantage of. You see this wall here? This is the wall that divides your two houses. What's it sitting on? Nothing, it seems, right now. It's completely rotted out. It's why the termites come in. Wood does not touch earth. It's sitting on earth. Termites get in, they go through it, they rot away. You can see this one's completely eaten out here, and I don't even want to touch it. What's holding all this up? And you have a bathroom up there. You have a toilet, you have a sink approximately right here. This two by four here, which is almost hollow, which means it's rotting away, is holding up this one floor joist. So I'm really surprised that no one's dropped from the bathroom upstairs to the basement downstairs. That's how bad the structure is. So here's for sure, you're going to lose this bathroom. Absolutely for sure. Why? I need the space to come down the stairs, create a turn down, and stairs, which means I lose all of this because we need head clearance. I have codes, I have to meet codes. The bathroom on the main floor is a major reason why we purchased the house. Just when we're entertaining, it's just easier to have bathroom right there and it's shocking that our safety was at risk with there being no support under the bathroom. It's scary. I need to pull all this out to rebuild all this wall and I'm gonna have to do it from the inside. Build in a block wall on top of it to create a benching system to help your neighbor from falling into your house because they're only eight inches on the other side of this. We'll call this a little bit of a smorgasbord of termites, contractors, homeowners, one of them, all of the above, that's for sure, contaminated the home. The 
The good news is, is we'll have all this documentation so that when you sell a house, you don't sell a piece of crap to the next people, OK? Sorry. It's OK, Mike. Thank you. It's a good thing we're here. Yes, definitely. Very good thing. Yeah, thank you Because oh, you were on your couch and you saw a leak. Who knew? <laughs> you want to get a drink? Uh, something very strong. OK. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. We paid what we thought it was worth. Now we're finding out that um, it's not that beautiful. And there's a lot of things wrong with this house. And it's not worth anything close to what we paid for it. It's just bad. This room is going to shrink significantly when we take out those floor joists downstairs. The only way to get to this wall, this is my outside wall that is basically has dirt coming into it in the basement right now. So what do I have to do? I have to take down this wall. What we see here is a wire in the ceiling. So Damon sends me in here, tells me to, to tear this ceiling down. Here I got a wicked hammer. I start taking all the plaster and lath off, and I almost hit a power line that's hidden right underneath a skim. I could have put this right, this claw right through here. This should have been within the joist area. Instead, this guy just put it up against the ceiling, laminated a piece of drywall against it, skimmed over top of it. He didn't care about anyone here. God. We have termites up this whole wall. Oh my God, that used to be wood. Houston, we have a problem. This bathroom is actually infested or was infested with termites. Now I'm seeing a lot of damage at once. This used to be wood and I can actually put my finger through it now. That used to be lath. So that is severe damage. The Tasmanian devil of bugs. They'll eat through plastic, they'll eat through wood, they'll eat through plaster. These things do more damage than we do. One little insect. This bathroom was coming down. If it wasn't for termite damage, we probably never would have found this. We were dealing with a basement issue. And this is as bad as it gets. One, two, three. We have not seen a live termite since Orkin has sprayed. It's a major bonus. That means the stuff is doing its job. This is going to be a real headache for a lot of people. It's going to be a headache for the Bowens. It's going to be a headache for Martin, the plumbing. Everyone has to work on top of each other in order to get this job done. And we can get to a stage where we can actually stagger the trades at some point. We're at the front of the house. Um, this is my main line, which, uh, which exits the building. I've installed a main line back water valve. Um, it simply works as a one-way valve, allowing any water in the sewage to be discharged freely uh, out of the house. But in case if there's a backup happening from the outside, that water will come back to this point, and then this one-way valve will actually close, and the gate will stay closed as long as the pressure is being applied to it. So protecting, obviously, the house and the content from any, any sewer contamination and, and, and the property damage. Water was saturating through this entire foundation. If the water continues to penetrate through this foundation and we don't manage it, eventually this wall will start moving in. As this wall moves in, the joists move down, and they'll feel the trickle effects through the main floor and the second floor of the house. A house this age wouldn't have a weeping tile system on the outside, very unlikely. And after some excavation, it was determined that there was no weeping tile system around the perimeter. So our only option is to go on in the interior with this house. The adjacent structure is about a foot away. There is no room to excavate and install on the exterior. We're gonna run that weeping tile into a sump box and we're gonna discharge the sump box outside.
Well, you know it's a good day when you have a site full of masons. So we're ready to actually start building that wall. Tim's here with a couple of apprentices from a local school, and he's ready to knock that off for us. There's always demand for masons. Obviously, the economy goes up and down. But uh, uh, by and large, when everything is chugging along the way it's supposed to, there are not enough masons to go around. So uh, we need to keep training if we're going to keep up uh, with, with that. Probably going back 50 to 60 years ago, you would use brick uh, and they would do it in two or three layers on a house. And that was a, a, a good structural way. But block obviously has a bigger surface on it. It's gonna go up quicker. It's uh, probably in the long run a little more durable. The block is, is being your structural, also sound, fire resistance to give you everything you want in the wall. Is our uh, premium mix. It's very high flowable, virtually self placed and self leveling. It's very easy to work with, does not require any experience to, to place it. We put fiber in it today. It's a little bit extra bonus for, for today's pour. It'll help us with uh, shrinkage, it'll help us with cracking issues down the road. Uh, just tightens it up a little bit, gives us a little bit extra flexural strength. So I thought I was being smart by using garbage bags and tuck tape, but I now have new boots, concrete reinforced. Not so smart after all. There's not really much holding this thing up, is there? There it goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. OK, walk it down. Good panic. Hey, bud, how you doing? Well, I think it's going to come down easy. You can probably just push it out. Have you <laughs> no, tried? Good. You knock off the bottom there, pull off the brown piece off the wall, two by four, and yeah. just get a couple guys with rope and pull it back. That sounds like a bit more fun. Okay, ready? Yeah. There you go. See what happens when it's done, Ron? Yeah. How am I supposed to get down now? <laughs> Close the door. Well, this is what I really like to see is some progress. We have a nice, level, concrete floor with no cracks. It's a very nice job. And the guys have been really busy with our framing here. We have most of this basement framed at this point, which is great. I like to call this the last line of defense for our termite issue here. This product is called Blue Wood. It has an insect repellent in it. It has a water resistance to it and a mold resistance to it. It's a great product. A lot of trades happening today, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. I need my electricians to actually start running my plugs, getting wiring to all the rooms. I need my plumbers to start roughing in my bathroom. I have to get the boiler in today with Gary. It's a really big day. We want to finally get some heat in this house that's not a temporary heating solution. The reason we have to use wood on this window, Damon, is Structural windows are up to a certain size. We right. Use a, it comes with steel inside. Yeah. Anything beyond that size, we have to put a lintel. That's right, so in which we could not do a lintel exactly. here. We have archways. The wood we're putting now is not a structure. It's just something to fasten into. That's right. And we're using the proper wood, which is blue wood. It's going to repel the insects to begin with anyway. Plus, the treatment from working on the outside, I'm Perfect. not worried about it.
so I'm relying on you very heavily today, my friend. You got a lot to do. You've got baseboard, you have casing, you have doors to do today. You have built-ins to do today, okay? Perfect. He wants me to build two shelves. I'm basically building a rectangular box. Uh, and then I'll put it in, dry fit it, make sure it fits. Just need to shim it out, level it, and it's done. Yes, get to work. I am your father. <laughs> He's insane. Yeah, it looks perfect right there, Dave. Way it should be. Look at this. How are you? This is totally the way it should be. That's a lot better, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I mean, before, it was, you barely got under it. It was right. a roof. What the hell was up there? Well, plus, they cut out a joist. I mean, the bathroom was going to fall in on them. So, what do you think? Uh, this is nice. Look at this. Eh? Day and night. Day and night. Yeah. What a difference. Very nice. Uh, this is very professional, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let's get them, because okay. I think they're going to fall over. Well, you better. Good job. Thank you, man. Good job. Well, it's not the same house anymore. This isn't the same house. Wow. Come on downstairs. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> no oh. way. My goodness. How long have you been out of the house? Seven oh, weeks. Goodness. Seven weeks. Are you happy to be home? I'm so happy. And yeah. it's gorgeous. It was worth it. I'm going to have to tell you about price, because I have to. Okay. I want people to understand how much this could cost to solve all these problems. You're at about $150,000 worth of work. Wow. Now, you know why you were not allowed to be in the house? You had to go out. I wasn't trying to surprise you. This was ripped apart. It looked like a bomb had gone off. Right. You couldn't use the, the toilets, the, the mm -hmm. sink. You didn't have any water. You didn't have any heat. We brought in Orkin. Orkin actually treated the property, which you're going to have to pay attention to. We're going to give you all this information to make sure you know when to call them back. All the wood is blue wood. What's blue wood? Termite resistant. And? OK, water resistant and mold resistant. OK, oh, so now we've solved all the problems of termites getting in. This is great. Amazing. This here, we opened right up, and you have a new cinder block wall. We had to bench it. We had to form and pour a bench of structure and then cinder block off that, and it's right up to the steel right. beam. So you have an internal weeper, uh, so that's in the floors, plus a, a protection over top of that. You actually have not only brand new carpet, but a brand new floor. The whole floor was pulled up. There was no sense in trying to mess with it. It was the old floor, so you know, about an inch thick, staggered. The floor looks even now. Well, let's just, you know wow. what concrete this is? Come on, we only use the best. What's the concrete? Agilia. Agilia, Agilia. what's Agilia? Wow. Self-leveling. Self yeah. Self yeah. Self yeah. 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 <laughs> all new plumbing in the floor, all new electrical. Everything's done to set for you now, right? You're never going to see that drain again, flood here. So if it looks beautiful on the outside, imagine what's beyond all this, because that's what we're all about, OK? Right. Bringing in the right people, the plumbers, the electricians, right down to the painters, finishing doors, windows, stairs, you name it, they've all been here. Let's go see the furnace room. So I'm no longer on my knees. I have proper Yes! Hurt, <laughs> and we can go in to the furnace room. Oh, my gosh. Well, this oh, wow. is, again, you oh, can see all the new pipes and all the work that's been done. You yeah. All plastic piping, we're on this. We love this stuff. It's a high-grade polyethylene. All right, enough of this. I want you two to see the bathroom. Oh, no! my God. Well, it's, it's oh, a bathroom. Oh, my gosh. This is beautiful. Wow. Hoo -hoo, I know where I'm showering. This is no longer the men's bathroom. Oh, my goodness. Oh, They're fighting over it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. 
Now, not wow. only is everything mold resistant in here and properly done, oh waterproof, all the products that you see that we normally use, you even have a three liter flush toilet, and it works. Well, I'm happy. Are you happy? Oh, we're I'm more ecstatic. than happy. I'm ecstatic. Oh my gosh. Let's go upstairs. I want to show you one more thing. Now, I said we put a closet upstairs. Yeah. Look at your closet. It's a water oh, closet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes! <laughs> oh, Mike, you're no, awesome! Wait. Now, what I like about this, wow. Kevin, it's got a urinal on the right and a toilet on the left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, that's the sink. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mike, gosh. thank you so hey, much. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Amazing. Wow. Kevin, Mike, thank you. Oh my I gosh. love helping good yeah. people. Damon, oh my I love helping good Damon. people. Damon. Oh, wow. thank, you. thank you very much. Oh, wow. Still in shock. Just thank you to... Damon, Mike, the whole team, the whole crew, amazing, amazing, so happy. We were in complete shock with the <laughs> amount of work that Mike and his team did. Take oh the stuff smelling. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take a handshake and hug the girls. <laughs> Good hugs. Thank you. Okay. okay, we're hugging too much. Let's get some food. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes.